So Digital Eclipse actually pioneered the use of emulation in commercial game releases back in 1994. In 1994, when we released those first few games, it was Joust Defender and Robotron. It was the first time I think anybody had ever seen video game emulation. There's been the concept of emulation for a while, but nobody had ever applied it to uh, video games. Building on the use of emulation, Digital Eclipse in its early days really focused on gaming history of like adding that context and having interviews with developers and showing design documents and talking about why these games were so important historically. When we first started doing these, we thought that one of the best things we could do is bring the original developers in and, and give people who were looking to play these games an inner look at the creation of these games told from the actual creators. Over the next 30 years, you know, Digital Eclipse continued to evolve how it presented classic games to the world. Recently, with things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowabunga Collection, or Atari 50, the anniversary celebration, we've made a lot of effort to really try to present these games in their best possible light, and then also give the player as much context as possible. And especially with Atari 50, that was our first release in the interactive documentary format, in which the games sort of became just part uh, of the experience that the player would have. We were producing Cowabunga Collection and Atari 50th at the same time. We realized that was probably the perfect moment to flip the script. And instead of starting with the games, let's start with all those materials. Let's start with basically the museum exhibition. Make the games something that's integrated in a, a more of a narrative rather than just a game list. So our next evolution in how we're presenting classic games is called the Gold Master Series. It is an independent, self-published line of interactive documentaries that look at specific, landmark, iconic games that change the world. The Gold Master Series from Digital Eclipse is the culmination of things we've wanted to do for, for actually decades now. Once we realized that there is an audience for the craft, the artistry uh, of, of video games, we wanted to like, put more of an emphasis on key moments in game history. And we felt that there was nothing like that in games to date. So we had to push ourselves to create a format that tells the story of games within games themselves in an interactive way that is unlike anything I think we've seen before. The Gold Master series is really a different approach than I've seen traditionally to talking about game history or game preservation for that matter. A lot of times you get the game and you might get some of its original assets, some cool box art or, or a, a nice scan of the instruction manual, but no further insight into why that game is the way that it is or what it led to later on in the industry. So Gold Master series really gives us a framework to tell a more documentary, exploratory approach to to make the game more relevant to modern gamers and help them understand what made it so important in the first place. Who made this game? Why did they make it? What tools did they use? What was the broader cultural context around that? What was the industry context around that? What was the platform that this game was produced for? All of that is lost when all you have is just a game file sitting in front of you. That's what we want to change with the Gold Master series. We want to make sure that all of that context is wrapped around the game. Here's an artifact. Here's a design document. Here's an interview with somebody who's an expert. Here's one of the people who lived that history. And you get to experience it step by step at your own pace, the same way that you would if you were walking through a physical museum. I've been to museum exhibits where there's video games and you know, there might be just a playable video game, you know, placed uh, alongside all of the artifacts and you have the choice. Do you want to stand in that museum and just play that game for hours because until they kick you out? I mean, that you could do that, you know, or you could play it for just a minute and then move on to the next thing and the game itself becomes just one of the exhibits in the museum. When you walk into a museum exhibition, you might look over here and want to read about the guy who, who this is all about, but you're probably going to look over there and see the shiny thing that's like the result of all his work and start there. But some people will go to that plaque at the very beginning and spend 20 minutes at it and read that. We realize that people consume information so differently and there's a, a diverse approach to all that that we had to satisfy every possible way somebody wanted to consume this information. And so we, we, we've created a new format for that and we feel really good about that. 
The Gold Master series is not about, you know, here's some games and here's some bonus content. It's about integrating everything all together into one seamless experience. If you like being told stories in order, that's great. If you're more the kind of person that likes to experience things in small, intense bites and you want to do it at your own pace and you don't want anybody to tell you how to, how to go through the museum, you can experience Gold Master series games the same way. The first entry in the Gold Master series is called The Making of Karatika. I'm really excited that the first game in the Gold Master series is going to be Karatika, one of my favorite games of all time. It had a huge impact on me, and it felt very natural that we did that as our first game. Karatika was a landmark release uh, that just made so many innovations all at the same time in terms of cinematic elements like cutscenes and characters and story, use of a movie-like soundtrack, and even using rotoscoping to do lifelike animation in a video game for the first time. Jordan Mechner was a teenage college student when he created Karatika for the Apple II in 1984. One of the most remarkable things about Karatika was that in a world filled with arcade games, simple blasters, alien invasions, uh, things like that, Jordan had this different aspiration to tell a narrative story. I think we're lucky that we were able to do Karatika first for the Gold Master series because it's such an incredible story. There's so much information and, and there's a wealth of knowledge that was collected by Jordan that we were able to kick this series off in the right way. And I'm hoping that as, as people play it and engage it, we can change minds about the way we approach game history and how we tell the story of games.